unit. They called them tunnel rats. Had to go underground and smoke out the VCs. The tunnels were booby-trapped and filled with North Vietnamese. He knew what was around every corner, every dark corner. Those tunnels gave our troops nightmares. They still do. Nam was brutal. We lost 60,000 Americans. And this Israeli-Hamas war is set to be long and bloody. The Israelis need to be ready for a serious fight. Bob Stewart is called in in uh, your unit and they asked for volunteers. Most of the guys, some guys were going to training. A lot of guys were just volunteers. I'll go in. Ain't got time to wait for the other units to come in. So you skinny guy, I was about 120 pounds soaking wet, kind of tall and thin, like a snake go down there. You got to worry about the punji sticks and the human uh, uh, waste on it and get you infection. The bacteria grow so fast, you amputate your feet and everything else before you can get them fixed. And they have a side slit, you know, drop in and then next thing you know, they're bayoneting you. So we'd take a concussion grenade, throw it in there first, scramble the brains of the people that's in there. And then get the snakes out, the bamboo vipers and uh, other booby traps they'd have, and you gotta go slow and easy, take you in with a rope, and you get hurt, and you jerk you back out. But you know, most of the time, you keep going, there's different levels. They had trap doors with seals on them. You, know, you put foo gas down there, you put uh, tear gas down there. We even tried to drown them out, didn't work. They would actually have entrances and stuff coming from the rivers and stuff. These people uh, over there in the Middle East have learned the lesson from the Vietnamese, and the Japanese, and the Koreans, and the Hitler's guys, the Nazis, but so as the Israelis learn from the Americans about how to handle these people. And uh, it takes that special type of person that's willing to uh, give their life up for their country and their uh, loved ones and family. Because uh, it takes a lot, of, a lot of courage to go down inside of a dark hole with a 45 and a flashlight and hope for the best. But a lot of times you don't want to use that 45, try to use your knife because you don't want that loud noise that puts you, gives your position away. But uh, I can't talk very much about me, but I talk about the guys in 68, 69, that when they first went in the Iron Triangle where I was stationed at Coochie, Vietnam, and the 25th Infantry Division, the first of the 27th Wolfhounds, it was horrible. And uh, the old plantation, rubber plantation, they, it was completely honeycombed. And they had big uh, campaigns going in there to just to try to clear it out. But I think of America and uh, they're, what they did in World War II, if the Israelis paid attention, and they do it like we did in World War II through the Hitler and Nazis and Japanese, they had the caves in, in uh, Iwo Jima and every Guadalcanal. And they have a resolve to win that, and uh, they can walk right through there. And you're going to have casualties, and I'm, I'm a fearful for the, uh, the hostages because the hostages are going to pay the price because they're going to use them as human shields. They figure they play on your Christian heart that you don't want to kill your own people, and that is the sad part of it. And I pray for them, and I've got their... Uh, in my prayers every day because uh, living through that, it's a horrible, horrible thing. And there's so many guys that, you know, just can't cope with that. And there's a lot of guys that committed suicide and like they call it 22 now with the guys from Iraq and Afghanistan. But the Vietnam vets, every day we were in the holes and every day shooting and firefights. And I commend the Israelis for paying attention and they go in and force and do what they got to do and, uh, and pray for the hostages. Uh, it, yeah, you just... Uh, Bob, you just blew me away. I've words. never heard anything that graphic and mm -hmm. that terrifying in my well, entire life.